Yeah, hi, sorry about that. So, I've got a few things to tell you. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year. We hope 2021 will be better than 2020. Uh, secondly, I'm sitting on my MacBook Pro M1, 8 gigs, 256 gigs, because I'm cheap and that's all I could afford. And thirdly, lots and lots to talk about. <coughs> so, oh, first things first. Well, actually, four things fourth. Hang on. Got to reach over here. Got to reach over here. There we go. I've got to turn on my shh, recording in progress light that I got for Christmas from the family so that when the kids come in, they don't want to shout and scream at me or poke me or say, Daddy, I need your help with this. So I've got a nice big neon thing, uh, which is in the corner of my room now. So let me tell you a few things about what's been happening with this M1, because uh, if you've come for benchmarks, by the way, you're going to be sorely disappointed. But I have fun things to tell you if you haven't come for benchmarks. So the things I have to tell you are that last night I drained the M1 battery in just over three and a half hours. Don't be disappointed by that, though. I was being completely foolish on purpose. So let me tell you what I did. Last night, I had a gig on Jamulus. It's a Wednesday thing. It happens every week. It's a load of fun. And what I do is I go on a server with a bunch of other people and we play loads of tracks together. It's a set list, usually about three hours long. Well, actually two and a bit, eight till 10. Um, so I unplugged the machine at 20 past eight, 10 past eight in the evening yesterday. And I was in Logic. Complete Control was running. By the way, I told Logic to open in Rosetta because it currently works better with Complete Control this way. Jamulus also is not M1 built, so it's running in Rosetta as well. Very exciting. Um, and so I started with 100%. By the time the gig was done, about half 10, I was on 12%. So, all right, a bit less than three and a half hours, more like two and a half to two and three quarter hours. Um, let me tell you what was running just so that you don't feel put off by this battery life. Because if you haven't bought an M1 yet and you've been thinking about it and you can't come across this video and you hear about this really terrible battery life, it was entirely my doing. And I was very not surprised by it at all. So I had the following things going on on this system. At least two Rosetta apps and, and countless amount of plugins in Logic that were not, uh, that were also Rosetta running. So what did I have running? I had the Sonic Joe Hammersmith free piano, Sonic Joe Canterbury suitcase. So those are two things running in contact. And if it was running a separate instance of contact per plugin, that's something else. Then I had the XLN Audio Addictive Drums and XLN Audio Modern Upright Pianos. Um, I had Orchestral Essentials 1 Strings. I had Spectrosonics Keyscape times two. And I had Cork Triton and FM8 as well, Native Instruments FM8. So you count the amount of plugins up. I don't know how many of this. Lots. Lots. And all that was running. Oh, and I had the, my library drive connected, which is an SSD, which is, you know, dragging power off the USB. And then I had peripherals as well because I have the keyboard in front of me. That's drawing nearly 500 MA. Then I had two sound cards as well, drawing another 500 MA each. And as I say, plus the SSD. So um, it was not a light load. Not a light load and all that off of two ports. And the Anchor Hub that I was using itself, I think draws for 60 watts, or was it 40 watts? I don't remember, uh, to do all the things it does. Uh, that hub has built in two, two built-in card readers, plus ethernet, plus HDMI, plus two USB uh, ports, and had an iLock dongle on there as well. So don't be put off by this battery life. I can't stress this enough. That was a stress test and boy, did it test the stress. It was very stressy and testy, and it did what it was supposed to do. The gig was great. The machine did not glitch. This was also a glitch test for me and a bit of a fill test because I want to gig with this machine ideally. Um, I've got a 15 inch 2019 MacBook Pro, which I would like to leave at home because I'm a posh git and I have two computers now. Didn't plan on this, by the way, but then one came out and kind of threw me for a loop and I was like, I better pick one up and see what I can do with it. Um, particularly because if I, I was going to get a, another Mac at some point, and the reason being, by the way, is because I felt very, very bitter uh, when I bought my Mac. Three weeks after I bought my Mac, out came the 16-inch. And I didn't feel like going back to the shop and replacing it. And when I called up Apple about Apple trade-in, they said, well, since the 2019 15-inch is not yet on our website, you might just get £400 for it. I wasn't going to take my Mac in having paid two and a half grand, nearly 2.2 grand for a Mac for £400. Are you mad? So I said, no, nah, forget that crap. So basically... Um, I kept the 
2019 15 inch and didn't go in and take it for a 16. Now, people have said to me afterwards, I probably would have gotten the 16 inch if I'd have taken it directly in store, but I didn't want to risk it. And I didn't feel like wasting a trip if I wasn't going to do it. So I put up and shut up. And the machine is fine, by the way. It's a perfectly acceptable piece of kit. So I'm, I'm not really complaining about it. But when the M1 came out this year, I said to myself, hmm, I may pick one of these up at some point. And then Amazon had this thing on sale for £107 less than the asking price. So I saved 8% and I had a £40 voucher as well. And I added that to it. So overall, I did fairly well. So I'm going to chapterize this video because loads of people came for the stuff I'm going to talk about. But I just wanted to talk about the rambly bit beforehand because there's a lot to talk about. And I think I've now talked about it enough. So, yeah, if I'm why am I telling you I'm chapter marking it? I've got I've already done it. You've seen it. You've probably jumped out to it anyway. You don't care. So anyway, yes, I have this now M1 MacBook Pro 2020 8 gig 256 gig. I didn't go for the 16 because I was either going to just return it or not use it for a lot. But then I saw how powerful it was and decided, well, I'm going to try and gig with it so I can leave the bigger one at home. I didn't want to travel with 15 inch anyway. I didn't like the form factor. I was using an 11 inch MacBook Air before I had the 15 inch MacBook. So 11 to 15 is a huge jump. 11 to 13, uh, sorry, 30, uh, 15 to 13 is a nice downsizing almost back to my 11 inch. And I love the form factor. Plus, I don't have to use that godforsaken butterfly keyboard. I can use the magic keyboard of the new Mac. So I really want to turn this into my gig machine. So I hope I can do that. And uh, I will come back and tell you more about that as time goes by. But having done this live field test yesterday, um, I think there's a very, very high chance that when all the plugins I use go full native, um, I can do this. I can do it really and mean it. So I'm, I'm happy overall. Right. The, the part of the video that the blind people came to see, including uh, me, who was excited to see what happened. Uh, the next part is going to contain a lot of synthetic speech. So if that's the most interest you have in this video, now is the time to turn off. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. If you're sticking around past this point, let me show you some interesting stuff. So the next part is about VOCR. I've just sat down with Chi Kim, who made VOCR, and if you are blind and use a Mac, you probably know what this is. And if you don't, it is the OCR app that we use to scan the screen and deal with inaccessible plugins and what have you. So <laughs> I should show you the way it ran before the compile. And I'm going to show you how I put it back to running in Rosetta, because this will also show you how to run an app in Rosetta if you need to do this when you get an M1. So let me quit the current iteration of the OCR. You now hear my speech. Menu extra of studio VOCR menu quit quit finder desk. Let's go to the applications folder. Applications app. type VOCR v VOCR app. hit Today command. Shush, app. don't talk when I'm talking. You sod command I and I will just go and look around the window for the run in Rosetta checkbox. Get info, VOCR info, VOCR today, J applicate seven million Macintosh, the 30, the 31 copyright open in the open using Rosetta and ticked tick box. Tick this button box ticked. All right, close that window. Close window, app, VOCR. Run VOCR. App. Open selection. It's now running. Close this window. Close window. Desktop empty. Now let me show you two things. Let me show you how slow it is running in Rosetta because this is when it's not compiled for M1. And this is where the M1 benchmarking stuff or not quite benchmarking, but kind of the way that we would do things becomes a little bit exciting. So on an Intel Mac, VOCR as it stands runs fairly quickly. But even on this desktop where there's no icons to speak of or nothing really to talk of, it's very sluggish. Listen to this. Wait. Finished. Ah, it, oh, it's done. And we'll do it again. Finished. Not so great. Not too bad. But when it gets bad, Obs Logic Pro is track to complete. Track one piano. If I open up this plugin window, piano dialog, piano, piano dialog, link. And this window on screen now is the complete control uh, view for Logic. It's the plugin, uh, the, the the complete control editor view in Logic. And this uh, is not somewhere you would normally go, but it's a big enough window that you can really kind of get a feel for this length of time it takes with this version of the OCR under Rosetta, which is before the compile, what this thing would do natively. Because when it's not compiled for M1, of course, it's running in, under Rosetta and you've got no choice about it. So have a listen to the length of time it takes to scan this screen. All right. 
Okay. Finished. Okay, that nearly took until 2021. We'll do it again. Just to show you, it wasn't a fluke. It's quite lengthy. Finished. Even on an Intel Mac, you'd be looking at half that time. Half that time. So what are we counting in seconds? One, two, three, four, five. Finished. So about four seconds. Uh, just under four seconds. Uh, just over four seconds because it was finished on the fifth. So two and a half. Okay, that's the plug-in window there. Let me minimize this window. Finder. Let me quit the OCR. By the way, you can hear fireworks in the background. M menu, v v OCR. menu, quit. Finder. Let me switch back off Rosetta. Applications, VOCR, get info, VOCR in seven to the thirty first, the third one cop open in the res open using res unticked. Close window. Reopen VO VOCR. Open selection, close window, desk. And then we'll do the desktop scan. Finished. That's quite a bit quicker. Do it again. Finished. It's got quicker again. Let's go back to this logic plugin window, which took five seconds before. Logic Pro. Now count with me. One. Finished. No, that wasn't a fluke. Count with me. One. Finished. Yes, correct. You heard that right. Piano. That is the M1 increase. That is because of the 16 cores neural engine. I think it's 16 cores neural engine. Could be talking out my bum hole for all I know, but I think it is. So it's not really doing much work on the CPU. That is purely the speed of the M1 once this app has been compiled, uh, which is now running universal. Uh, it's a universal app now compiled for M1. And so that speed increase means that all your plugin windows and all your plugin woes, when you have to wait a long time for the thing to do what it has to do, is kind of gone. It is nice, it is fast, and it is wonderful. And I needed to share that because I thought it was worth it. Hi. Year. See you next year is right. <laughs> That's a good suggestion. That's what you to say. Can you see, see my big you light on? Year. Yeah. That's, That's cool. how we stop. Alright, it's fine. I'm, I'm gonna upload this video in a bit and you guys can see it and see how it looks sure. in the camera. Well, yeah, see you next year is about the end of it. I have nothing more to say in this video really. I talked so much and I showed so little, but I hope that you've got something useful out of this. And as the kids say, one more time for good measure. See you next year! Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>